What's up everyone? How are we doing? I'm outside today uh, about to eat my breakfast and it's nice out so I can make these videos again. I used to make them a lot more last year but now uh, the weather is nice so I'll try and make some more here. Um, today I'm talking a little bit about confirmation. Okay and I'm talking about specifically the idea of explanation, we, how we see confirmation, some of the complexity that's involved in training. It, when it comes to anything in life, you can provide an explanation for something, but that explanation doesn't mean it's the correct explanation. Now, you can explain why the earth is flat, I mean, you might have a thorough explanation, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your explanation is correct. And so by nature, like this, there's, there's a lot of unknowns in this world. And I think as a human listening to this, you can relate. There's a lot of just general uncomfortabilities, a lot of things, um, a lot of guidelines, but not precise actions. And that's, you know, why we are so unique as people, but also why at times it can be very difficult um, when it comes to the scientific world or the idea, not necessarily the scientific world, but the, uh, the world of trying to be more correct in certain actions, when in theory there is a single correctness. Right? A lot of things we do in life, there is no single correctness. It's not like there is a correct fashion that is most fashionable, or there is a correct way of waving at someone even, right? There's many variants, but in theory, if we're talking about training and adaptation, in theory, there is one correct best method of training and there's a slew of other methods that are better than average and there are methods that are less than average. So the question is, how do we understand, well, that we're doing a really good job and we're trying to be better than average. You might not be perfect, but in theory, there is a perfect program out there. Um, it's always changing, but you get the idea. So as humans, we like to seek confirmation as a means of justification. So let me explain. If you don't know what to do, you're often safer going with replication of what the majority is doing. So you say, oh, you know, right now a lot of people are doing this kind of training method or that kind of training method. And you do that training method because there's safety in numbers. Um, you look at it and you say, well, a lot of people are doing it. It must be effective. It must be right, and I'm going to go that way. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And by sheer numbers, if a lot of people are doing it and seeing some positive results, the probability is that it is a good program. So let's not get that twisted. But your explanation for why you're doing that program has no core principle behind it, other than the fact it's based on mimicry, or you're just trying to confirm that your training is good and you're confirming it by simply going with a large number of, uh, or with a option that a large number of people have chosen that seems to get some type of results. And that's totally fine. But the issue with that is if you want to build off that core principle, that core principle of your justification, you actually don't have any core justification other than someone else is doing it. And this is kind of a classic example of where us as humans get in the way with us as trying to be scientists. I don't know whatever you want to call it. Because what happens is we as humans want to act in a way that's the most time efficient, that's the least burdensome, that feels the most comfortable and confirms what we're trying to do, right? Oh, if everyone else is doing that training program, let's do that training program. And that doesn't mean what you're doing is incorrect. It just means the explanation and your justification for doing that might not be understood beyond just I'm doing it because of other people. And the issue with that is if you want to build off that, let's say we have a bell curve. And right now, here's the average. And if you're less than average, you're over here. If you're better than average, you're over here. And let's say that training program is better than average. Awesome. But then you want to take it to the next level. You want to make it even better. If you don't know why it's better than average in the first place, how can you build off the foundational principles? So what happens here is you have better than average, and if people don't actually understand this training program, they're gonna to start to justify it, or actually say explain it in certain ways that make sense to them, but again, isn't necessarily accurate. 
and then you might have a cohort of individuals who believe that explanation and so that explanation becomes factual in the uh, opinion of the public eye and then then they build off of that and they build off of that and they build off of that but it doesn't mean you're getting more correct you're just building off of explanations that are only justified because of confirmation uh, not because of any mechanism that's been researched or anything that has validity through other resources and that's the point i'm trying to get at too is you don't need confirmation from strictly peers you should have justification from sound evidence. And that's the whole idea of the scientific method, right? You isolate something, you understand a principle, and that's telling us on the probability curve, that's why we have the stats in these studies, that it's not random chance that whatever was isolated is more effective, but there's probably a reason to it. And then that reason gets explained and justified through mechanistic research of understanding how our body works the best it can. And so when you build off of those principles with your own justified explanation with evidence, yes, some might be anecdotal, some might be observational, but there should be an explained mechanism, then you can further develop it. And that's the whole idea of theory. It's a theory that is based on evidence and support that you then begin to extrapolate into realms that maybe haven't been researched yet, but it's not being justified based on confirmation of others and what people are doing in the popular uh, uh, training verse. Because as we know, the popular training world always has ebbs and flows and the fads change. And if you were to just follow the, the, the popularity route, your program would be doing this throughout the years which is at times why we don't have the progress we'd like to see in the world of strength and conditioning and human adaptation and performance, because often the explanation is through confirmation and not through evidence and support. So that's my take on this this morning. I hope you all enjoy it. I'm gonna eat my breakfast. It's gonna get cold, so thanks and always take care.